the problem is also at stake in a way uh, when we consider uh, the respect of other rights, or other states' rights, excuse me, um, as a limitation of the military users of the EEZ of the states. Rights. 
So the second topic uh, proposed by the organizers of this workshop concerning military activities in the EZ is focused on the uh, respect of the rights of third states within the EZ of a coastal state. In that respect, at first glance, the jurisdiction of the coastal state on its EZ does not seem to play a role since the main issue concerns the respective rights and obligations of third states. However, the above mentioned, uh, uh, above mentioned unilateral interpretation of the angles by the coastal state cannot be ignored as we shall see. The question could arise about the mutual respect, and the question was raised this morning, about the mutual respect of rights of civil nature recognized by Article 58 to all states in the EZ of a coastal state, like the freedom of navigation and of overflight, the right to lay submarine cables, and the international uses uh, related to these freedoms such as those associated with the operations of ships, aircraft, and submarine cables and pipelines. Article 58 provides an obligation of due regard, which probably applies not only between the coastal state and third states, but also in the relationships between third states themselves. And this uh, situation has been uh, discussed uh, this uh, morning. The case of military activities of a foreign state possibly conflicting with freedoms recognized in other states by Article 58 seems rather odd and theoretical if we suppose that the conflict would only concern these two states without any intervention of the coastal states. For the coastal states, uh, in case of use of force, uh, the question uh, whether it is enforcement of its laws or a military activities, uh, activity can be raised. But in the case of third states, uh, there is no such question. Uh, all forms of use of force by third states in the EZ of the coastal state are, by definition, military activities. Uh, the obligation of due regard under Article 58.3 for third states exercising the rights in the EZ is drafted as applying essentially in their relations with the coastal state. So can it be argued that such an obligation also applies between third states? All states are of course bound by the general obligation enshrined in Article 300 of the UNCLOS to fulfill the obligations assumed under the Convention in good faith and to exercise the rights, uh, jurisdiction, and freedoms recognized by the Convention in a manner which would not constitute an abuse of rights. However, such prescriptions are different from the obligation to pay due regard as far as they do not specifically address the issue of combining conflicting rights, which is the proper purpose of the obligation of due regard. The obligation to avoid abuse of rights has a more general scope and applies even if there are no competing rights at stake. It is thus difficult to affirm that third states acting in the EZ of the coastal state uh, have under the UNCLOS um, an obligation uh, to pay due regard to rights of others uh, of other third states in the same zone, uh, except that, uh, as we shall see, and we have 
and it has been mentioned this morning, uh, this obligation arises uh, from uh, Article uh, 87 of uh, 2. So, um, what, uh, what is the situation of two states, uh, two foreign states uh, exercising the rights in uh, the EZ of the coastal state? How the exercise of their rights will uh, be articulated? The difficulty arises from the opposing positions taken by the states about the interpretation of Article 58.2 and the question of the legality of the exercise of military activities by third states in the EEZ. As a consequence, the answers can be different. The first, uh, so I will distinguish some uh, situations. The first situation, the category of situations will envisage would be that in which the coastal stage shares the restrictive interpretation of the U.S. and of most occidental countries concerning Article 56 and 58 of the Convention. Along with this uh, interpretation, the coastal state has no right to exercise military activities in its EZ and uh, it is not entitled either to oppose, um, well, the coastal state has right to exercise literati in EZ, of course, but he, um, it is not entitled either to oppose such an exercise by third states or to require any kind of authorization. Except for the rights expressly recognized to the coastal state by part 5 of the Convention, the EZ remains, is, along with this interpretation, a part of the high seas. Consequently, the coastal state will consider that the regime of uh, freedom of the high seas will apply along with Article 87. And Article 87.2 provides that these freedoms